I've been traveling around the world for probably 25 years now, and this was probably the most interesting assignment I've ever worked on at the National Geographic. Tibetan people have this sort of innate sense of style and almost sort of a fashion. The way they dress, the way they adorn themselves is, is really extraordinary considering they're so isolated and that they live in such a remote part of the world. You'll see these mountain men coming out of the hills uh, with all sorts of wonderful coral and jewelry and wonderful hats. It's, it's really, a, they're very proud, very dignified people. And it's really a tragedy that they've had this sort of political turmoil and upheaval for almost 50 years now. One of the most amazing things about Tibet and these Tibetan people is that they've, they're still very devout, that they've really hung on to their strong belief in Buddhism. Virtually every monastery was destroyed during the Cultural Revolution, but despite that, they've rebuilt these monasteries when the Chinese uh, loosened up the political system, and the, the, the faith in Buddhism, the faith in the Dalai Lama, is extraordinarily strong. So that uh, when you're there in Tibet, you see that Buddhism really permeates every part of their life, every part of their society. It's a very strong belief. There's probably a couple hundred thousand Tibetans living outside of Tibet, whether it's in India or Nepal or Bhutan or, or even the United States. And I think they have sort of an identity crisis in that they're really not living in Tibet. They feel very separated. And many of the Tibetans living in India are almost more Indian than they are Tibetan. They've really kind of drifted culturally away from uh, the kind of the motherland, if you will. I photograph when these monks at the monastery de debate. They debate every afternoon, and what they are doing is debating uh, Buddhist thought, Buddhist logic, and it gets very lively. The, the debate is it gets very physical. They want to make their points. They want to dominate the conversation. It gets very physical, but it's all in good fun. Probably 60% of the, the inhabitants in Lhasa are Chinese. Uh, you're really struck when you go there that the city is really, the architecture is really Chinese. The Tibetan part is really shrunk to just a few square blocks. The fact that Lhasa, the capital of Tibet, is predominantly a Chinese city has created kind of an upheaval in Tibetan society. Uh, there's widespread prostitution, there's uh, lots of nightclubs which are, which are really more Chinese than they are Tibetan. There's kind of a perversion and an undermining of Tibetan culture. Uh, and Tibetans really feel kind of alienated from their land, from their city, and they really feel like strangers in this alien landscape. Life is very different now for these Tibetans, and uh, it's not getting any better.